welcome everyone so i'm standing in for standing in for shweta um, who's not able to join in today um, so next episode of regal nest um, so i think we expect some more participants to join but uh, in the interest of time we'll get started i think today's topic or this month's theme itself is going to be cc4 um, so if you have if you have been noticing i think uh, the thoughtful tuesdays so money is also trying to align in terms of what's going to be the topic for the month in regalness so that uh, that becomes a learning theme for the for the community that's how it's it's been happening these days so i just thought i will highlight that to everyone so that uh, there is collective learning on this so that's the background and uh, i'm just inviting reka to share her wisdom on cc4 something which is close to her heart <laughs> through that yeah, thanks dear thanks um hello everyone so that was just a disclaimer to start off all competencies are equally important but you'll find that as you move in your journey as a coach you'll find that you tend to incline towards some more than others that's what it is but each and every competency is important and all of them are very much closely linked to each other i'm going to talk a little bit about that also today if you look at cc4 right i'm just going to share a slide here right if you see cc4 is cultivate trust and safety the first thing that strike struck me uh, when i uh, went through these new set of competencies that came out in 2019 sometime is word cultivates it very clearly stands out as something very different from all of the competencies in no other competency you will find the word cultivates being used and cultivates for me is about nurturing cultivates is for me about purposefully uh, nurturing a relationship but the word comes from the field of agriculture right we cultivate plants we cultivate uh, trees and so you need to make sure that the soil is appropriate you need to make sure that the environment is appropriate that there is adequate aeration that there is adequate amount of uh, uh, water sunlight and so on and all soil is not uh, conducive to all kinds of uh, plants we know that so what is the kind of environment that needs to be created where this relationship between the coach and the client will thrive we all know that trust and safety are trust especially is an extremely important foundational com uh, component of any relationship no matter what relationship it is isn't it in the case of a coach and client relationship this becomes even more important and even more significant and even more uh, something to be closely guarded and nurtured because this is a relationship where the client is actually going to share from their lives this is the place where they are going to bring into the conversation sometimes things that they may have never talked about with anybody or sometimes may not have even spoken those things to themselves uh, but they are sharing those with the coach and therefore this environment needs to be even more uh, guarded needs to be cultivated and needs to be nurtured more particularly than in many other relationships is what i feel now as i'm sharing this my views about this competency i want you to know that this is my take these are my interpretations these are the meanings that i have given to the descriptors that have come from icf don't please take this as the truth look at this whatever i am sharing these are some perspectives and they are mine you are free to make your own interpretations your own meanings and draw your own um uh, conclusions from every competency and if whatever i am sharing resonates makes sense to you reflect on it further and if it does not just leave it but there's no truth about what i'm saying this is my version of this competency yeah so what are we creating we are creating an environment for a thriving relationship when i look at these two words trust and safety i have a i have always found it difficult to separate them the two of them and i have always find found it difficult to figure out 
what is the cause and what is the effect? So it's more or less like a chicken and egg thing. What comes first? Do I feel safe when I trust you? Or do I trust you because I feel safe with you? I don't know. I have not been able to really differentiate and distinguish this. So I just leave it. And I say both are important for that kind of an environment to be created. So if you look at the word safety, you will find that there is a lot of stuff that is written about psychological safety. And a lot of things are said about psychological safety in the context of coaching. I want to highlight a different perspective today saying, is safety only about psychological safety? Is it only about feeling safe psychologically? Or is it also about feeling safe physically? Is it also about feeling safe emotionally, intellectually? How many other ways are there which might actually compromise safety? Or how many other ways are there for feeling unsafe? Has it ever happened to you? So I want thumbs up here. Okay, Has it ever happened to you that uh, you have seen a person and for no rhyme or reason, you have felt very unsafe around them? threatened by them, unsafe around them, right? Now, there's nothing to do with that person. That person, you have never even interacted with that person. You don't even know that person. And that person has no control over what you're feeling towards, towards them. But you just feel that way because maybe you are reminded of somebody from your past. Or maybe there are some things about that person's persona that are threatening for you. I know, for instance, for me personally, I'm, I feel very unsafe when I'm around aggressive people. And my interpretation of what you're doing as aggression, okay, you might be just behaving normally, but if it's coming across to me as aggressive, if it's coming across to me as overbearing, if it is coming across to me as dominating, I just switch off. I just, I don't want to, I don't want to say anything with you. Or I don't want to have anything to do with you. And if I am your client in that kind of an environment, I'll just skirt around things, you know. I, I'll, I'll just be at surface level. And I'll just be indulging you and I'll just want you off my back. I'm not going to really have a, a deep relationship with you as a coach. Now, there's nothing that you can do about it. And therefore, I feel that safety is a very dicey thing because... It's not so much about what you will do or not do as a coach. It's about how the other person perceives you. How the other, how you come across to that other person. And a lot of it has to do with you at all. It has to do with that person and their past and their beliefs and their values and their, um, uh, you know, experiences of life and so on. So then what do you do? How do you... How do you make the environment safe? So my belief is that you can't really make an environment safe. You can only be watchful about, is my client feeling unsafe? So I'm constantly on my guard looking at, is my client giving me indications of them not feeling safe? And I pick up some cues that the client might give. Like, for instance, if my client is being evasive or if my client is giving uns monosyllabic answers or if my client is uh, beating around the bush or if my client is not coming clean, you know, I might say this might be because my client is not safe. Could be a possible reason. Then how do I make them feel safe? Moment. But what I might do, one of the things that I might do is I might call it out. I might say that, you know, it feels, I feel as if something about me is not making you comfortable, is my sense. So how should I be or not be so that you feel more comfortable with me? And that brings me to a very important component of uh, this particular competency, which has got to do with transparency, openness, and vulnerability. How vulnerable am I uh, willing to be? How open am I willing to be? How transparent am I willing to be? 
the more open I am, the more transparent I am, the more vulnerable, vulnerable I am, the higher the possibility of the client feeling safe. Does it mean that it is guaranteed? No. I personally have had nasty experiences where my vulnerability has actually uh, put the other person off, has actually made them scared, has made them recoil, saying, oh my God, this is too much of openness. This is too much of vulnerability. I can't take it. Am I also expected to be so much? It's like, am I supposed to stand there naked in front of my coach? Figuratively. Not a very comfortable thought for many people. So here I am being vulnerable and open and transparent and assuming that that is creating a safe environment, but may not happen that way. So I have to, I cannot make any assumptions that anything is going to work like a formula. So I have to keep trying out this, that and the other. But I think these are very important components of creating or the possibility of creating a safe environment. Respect. If I demonstrate respect to you, for you, for your frame of reference, for your uh, beliefs, for your thoughts, for your assumptions, for your identity, for your context, for your environment, and I give it as much respect as I would mine, that is a very good way of creating trust. If I don't feel respected, it's very likely I'm not going to trust you. Because I'm going to keep feeling put down all the time. Now, here is what. One of the competencies, CC7, right, talks about asking questions around a client's beliefs, assumptions, values, and so on. Lot money, many coaches, what they do is they say that, oh, I need to challenge my client. So I'm challenging your beliefs. Watch out. When you challenge my beliefs, I feel that you're making my beliefs wrong. My beliefs are some are my principles by which I have lived my life. And now you're making them wrong. When you make my principles and my beliefs wrong, I don't feel respected. When I'm not feeling respected, I'm not going to trust you. So how do we do that then? So we do that with empathy. Right? We do that with support. We do that with compassion, saying, this is my frame of reference. This is who I am. These are my beliefs. And each one of us has those, by the way. These are my beliefs. These are my values. These are my assumptions. I might be limited by them myself. I understand that yours are different. I understand that perhaps yours are diametrically opposite mine, but that doesn't mean they are any less or they are any less valid or they are any uh, less important. Because they are yours. When we talk about unconditional positive regard, what does that mean? That means I'm accepting you in totality, which means I'm accepting everything about you. So that is where we demonstrate respect. Trust and safety are, you know, like the foundation. They are like the foundation, let's say the foundation for building. Now we have a whole building that is constructed on top of the foundation. We don't live inside the foundation. We cannot even see the foundation. But if there is a crack in the foundation, there is no amount of repair work that you can do on top of the building that will preserve that building. You have got to pull it down and rebuild it. Or trust and safety are like the roots of a tree, roots that go deep down into the earth. You don't see them, but they are very, very critical to the survival of the tree for the tree to flourish, for the tree to grow. If the roots are not given space, if the roots are not given air, if the roots are not given nourishment, the tree is not going to grow. So that's how I look at it. Now, what creates that foundation? Other competencies. Look at presence. If you're not present, and if as a, as a client, I sense that you're not present with me, I'm not going to feel safe. I'm not going to trust you. If you're not listening at, actively and if I sense that you're not listening to what I'm saying, to my feelings, to my emotions, to my expressions, to my words, and you're not getting me, then I'm not going to be able to trust you or I'm not going to be able to feel safe around you. So you see, all these competencies are needed for creating that environment. 
and unless and until that environment is created you are not going to have trust and uh, safety flourish so i want to leave you all with this thought to reflect on what is it that will make you feel unsafe or when do you feel unsafe what are those conditions when you are likely to feel unsafe i am not asking you to look at safe i am asking you to look at unsafe and what are those conditions which will cause a breach of trust in your relationships and you can look at any relationship don't have to look at a coach client look at your life and look at all relationships and ask yourself so just be in that reflection in the session today and later on in your life yeah thank you kareka over to you jail yeah yep keeping up with the time as well as i think with the limited time that we had tried to cover and as much detail as possible um i think the metaphor which you used about the roots right so i think that that stands out for me uh, and and about being the foundation for a building i think these two metaphors uh, if you're able to recollect that i think that's also going to help um i think the other question is about what makes you feel unsafe the other way of looking at it so if, if how do i feel safe rather than that if somebody asks me where do you feel unsafe i think that's a better way of looking at it so that we are also able to think from that perspective and then observe that in in any relationship thank you